Hey, this is Shiraz. And before we get started, I just want to let you know that when I clear something for someone, when I cause a shift, I tend to yawn and cough from the energetic shift that happens. I don't know why it happens. It's just how my body works. And if you don't know that, you're going to listen to this video and go, what the hell is wrong with this guy? You might still think that, but now there's more of an explanation. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you hear something that you can absolutely relate to, when I cleared for them, you can get it cleared for you too. Just say yes when they're saying yes, and it works. It's, I have people that watch these videos every morning to get stuff cleared. This can be your new morning habit too. Okay, that's enough for that. Let's get on with the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a great shift out of it. See you soon. You've hit the nail on the head with many points today. Oh, um, number one is illness. Um, I've had uh, illness for the past 27 years. Um, number two is uh, hard working or working hard. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm feeling that there's a convergence of the two in my life. Um, I have uh, moved. I've just walked out of a really bad situation. I've moved and I had so looked forward to finally getting launched into coaching which is something I've been working at for a few years. And now that I'm here um, and still settling in and have the time to really plunge into this, I find myself stalling and delaying. And gee, by coincidence, I'm getting ill every day mm -hmm. uh, and, and painfully ill in the last past or the past week. And I am so sure that these two are connected um, but the other thing that keeps coming up um, as a, a louder thought is I don't deserve, don't deserve success. I don't deserve to be able to step forward into something that I've been working at. Okay, another point to throw in there is that um, many moons ago, I had a serious accident, had to leave uh, the working field and lived on a disability pension and had exactly the same guilt um, about, you know, I don't deserve this. And having to, at that point, basically hide myself to some extent because I could not live on a disability pension alone. And I had to begin working from home um, and worrying that at some point in time that was going to show up on somebody's radar and um, I would be in serious trouble for doing that. So there's this whole convergence of things swirling around and all I know is that today where I've got the opportunity and I feel I'm wanting to really step into this, I don't know if I'm ready, but I'm wanting to, um, I'm putting the brakes on every day where I have a plan, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I don't. And I just fritter the time away and it's not what I want. Okay. If you were to step fully into this business, would you have to work hard all the time? Yes, and the, it's beyond hard. Uh, my mm -hmm. work experience has been for a long time that I was I was good at what I did, or certainly I was, I was always hired to do very responsible and very large jobs. And I always managed to produce a miracle and get that done. Okay. Um, at the end of, or at the completion of these massive projects, I was always kicked out. And part of it, and maybe I don't know what percentage of that part, was that I was expensive in these organizations. Mm -hmm. And so now that the job is done, we can hire cheaper help to coast with it. And okay. that always hurt. So, but you know, I've had um, certainly in the last formal job that I had, these were 16, 18 hour days for a year, okay. seven days a week. You know, I, I was so burnt out from that, that I took myself out of play by having a massive accident. Yeah. So there's, there's two major things going on there. Number one, do you have to be the savior? Oh, I don't want to be, 
<laughs> but I, I mean, there must be a part true. of that me. There that. has to be a part of me that's saying yes. Yeah, no, there's a big part of it because when you said I don't want to be, that did not come up true at all. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you have to be the savior, then you always have to have some someone or something to save. Mm-hmm. So if you have one of those jobs where you came in and you worked all these hours and you saved it and you were the one that, that was pivotal in it, yeah. and now it's just about coasting, you can't save everyone when you're coasting. So they have to get rid of you. So you can find something else to go to where you can save everyone again. So consciously in your real world, it looks like every time I do something amazing and help all these people out, then they get rid of me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But they have to so that you can go and find someone else to save because you've already saved them. You're done. Oh, I never saw that before, <laughs> but I do now <laughs> in this moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have to be the savior anymore, you can mm-hmm. just be in flow with whatever situation you're in. Right. See, and if you're going into a coaching business, part of you is going to say, I'm going to have to save every single oh, person I work I'm with. I'm thinking that. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking that while you're speaking. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't coach with the objective of being the savior. It sounds counterintuitive, mm. but if you have to save everyone, number one, you will only take clients that you are a hundred percent sure you can save, which mm-hmm. lowers the amount of people or cons- like significantly. There's only going to be a few people that your subconscious mind will say, I can work with this person. So you're going to say, I can't find clients. The second thing is you will work with that client until you save them. And then they're like, oh, I have to go move on to something else now. So you won't get further business from them because you're done. I'm laughing myself because when I left my corporate role, um, I returned to college and I became a psychotherapist. Okay. It was supposed to be just nice, easy, relaxed work, more or less. Um, I had... In my internship, I had more suicidal people than anyone. <laughs> and it was like, you're saying save. Uh, yeah, I didn't lose any of them. But, <laughs> but yeah, it has to be. I'm, I'm attracting that as well. I get oh, that. You have to. Yeah. You have to attract, attract the people. That need yeah. to save. Now, here's, here's the other thing that's, that screws up a lot of saviors is oftentimes you're attracting victims. Mm. Okay, because victims need to be saved. Victims, many of them don't like to be saved. So you attract victims and then you just never get anywhere with them. Right. Or you save them for a little while and then they have to go back into victimhood. So everything gets undone later on. Right. Right. That's that's one of the the worst things about being a savior is that's just the type of person you, you attract. So what if you could just help people without being the savior. Yeah. Okay. So are you willing to step out of your story that you need to be the savior? I think I am. Yeah. There's resistance coming up there. Who are you if you're not the savior? Yeah, exactly. What's my identity? How do I behave? How am I? I don't know. I don't, you know, there's this very conscious level that that doesn't want it, but it's a struggle and I can physically feel it at the moment. Uh, I teach classes to do what I do. And Mm -hmm. in them, one of the things I shouldn't be teaching you guys this because this is like a free webinar and people pay hundreds of dollars to come to these classes, but I'm going to teach you this anyway. In a session, when I'm with someone, my goal is not actually to get them to shift. Mm -hmm. My goal is to give them a space where they feel loved, uh, uh, they feel supported, and they don't feel judged so that they feel comfortable enough to just allow whatever shift to happen to happen. As a result, there have been times where I'm with someone, I don't even have to talk about their problem, and you'll see the shift happen because they're like, oh, I can do that here. Mm -hmm. Right? And the more I don't care about getting the result, the bigger the results are. It's, it's this weird paradox of the way the universe works, <laughs> okay? So when you stop trying to be the savior, you'll actually get better results. Yeah. But, you have to, but you have to get into this mindset that I, oh, I have to stop being the savior. That way I can get the better results. It's just like, no, I just have to stop being the savior <laughs> or else you're still trying to do it, but you're trying to do it sort of like this tricky backhanded way 
through your subconscious that you think you can convince yourself of. So my, my father was an allergist. And what was interesting is he could take people through the test and then he'd do a 20 minute consult with them afterwards to talk about the allergies, but then he'd also just talk to them about their life. And the crazy thing that started to happen is people started booking more appointments with him. And this, and the receptionist is like, are you having problems with allergies? They're like, no, I just love being with him. He understands me. He gets me. And they're like, we can't book you in for that. This is an allergist office. <laughs> but that's the space he created for people. Yeah. Right. So what if you could do that? And not just in your business, but just you could just do that, not have to save anyone, but be the space of love and acceptance without judgment. And yeah. that's who you can be instead of the savior. Yeah. Karen's getting a clue over there. <laughs> right? so, yeah. Okay. It, it's so very now, isolating to be a savior. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So are you willing to step out of the story that you need to be the savior? Yes. <laughs> are you willing to step out of the story that no one will love you or be around you unless you're the savior ow I, yeah i can feel the has the resistance you know? yeah yeah but here's the thing yeah. most people don't like saviors because they're like i don't i don't need saving stop it Stop it, Rosemary. <laughs> Can we just have yeah. a conversation with you not trying to save me? Can we do that, please? Right? Yeah. Like there's yeah. that ha- starts to show up in your relationship. Right. But if you're not the savior, again, people aren't going to run away because you're not saving them. They're just going to be like, I just love being around Rosemary because whenever she's mm-hmm. around, I can feel like I can just be me. And I don't feel like that with a lot of people because most people are judging me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to step out of it. Okay. I don't know what I'm okay. stepping into. I guess that's kind of this. But you're question. stepping into just what I'm saying, where <laughs> yeah. people are just, just they just want to hang out with you and yeah. be with you because they oh, can yeah. be them when they're with you. That would be nice. Okay. So are you willing to step out of the story that you have to be the failure or people will not need you and not want to be around you and not love you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. How's that feel? Better, worse, same or different? It's been such a physical trip the last couple of minutes. My heartbeat's now normal. Um, my shoulders are kind of feeling like they've come down from my ears. Um, and my stomach has stopped flip-flopping. Um, Good. Yeah. That's amazing. I feel so relaxed and so tired all, all in one. <laughs> I think a lot, a lot has shifted in the last few moments. So I thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like. And if you had a shift of your own, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Also, check out the description for energetic magic events that you can attend every single month. Be well, be aware, and be magical.